everyone, Manuela Marcajani. Welcome to Confessions of a Cosmetic Chemist. Today's episode is going to be the difference between dry skin and dehydrated skin. So with Confessions of a Cosmetic Chemist, we try to talk about skin care, the formulations, what's happening with the skin. Um, I'm a cosmetic chemist with over 35 years experience in product innovation, formulation, development. So I like to be able to share my experiences and inform and empower through education and more information from behind the scenes, from really someone in the industry who's been working really hard to create problem-solving skincare solutions. The importance of skincare should not be underrated because skincare is truly important in our life. Why? Because first of all, having a skincare routine is very important. It's very important for mental health. It's very important for hygiene. Being able to have a regular routine where you're actually working on a system of cleaning and hydrating your skin. Your skin is your calling card. It's the largest organ of your body. Now, we all have very different skin types and tones, right? Especially um, not just as different ethnic backgrounds, but even as we age and change, our skin is always aging and changing with us. So you can be young and you can have oily skin as you're going through puberty. As you get older, you can find that your skin becomes drier. Then as you go in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, you'll notice these changes in your collagen quality, your elasticity. Also, if you go and have maybe normal skin to combination skin, later on you have dry skin. So we end up with almost all the different skin types in our lifetime. So it's good to be able to understand what's happening to the skin, what happens at different, I always call it the age and stage. I don't really call it about your skin type because that does change. But your age and stage does determine what you need to do for your skin. So today, dry skin versus dehydrated skin. Now I am somebody that has very problematic combination more towards the oily type of skin. So in essence, I don't really have dry skin, but I suffer from a lot of dehydration. And people are gonna say, well, how is that possible? There's this big confusion between dry and dehydrated because we talk about moisturizers, we moisturize our skin, but it's really two stages. Dry skin, the definition of dry skin or the opposite of dry skin is going to be oily skin, not hydrated skin, which is interesting, right? So if you either have dry skin or oily skin. So it is about the oil within your skin. When you have dry skin, you lack moisture, yes, because there's not enough oil to retain the the moisture within your skin, the lubrication within your skin, which is usually more of a fat-based lubrication, gets very, you know, particular. Your skin can be more scaly, more flaky, a little bit rougher in texture. So this is very dry. And what you want to do then when you've got dry skin, you probably have very small pores. You feel your skin could be a little bit scaly. You want to put moisturizers on. You may find that when you're putting moisturizers on your dry skin, you will find that your skin stays a little leathery because then you also have an issue with hydration. And we're gonna talk about that as well. And that is where we get into that dehydration, dehydrated skin and the hydration of skin. Causes of dry skin. Usually it's genetic. It could also be environmental, especially if you're in places that are very desert-like, you know, Arizona, very dry. Places like that, your skin can, and the air is very dry, your skin can tend to be drier as the environment takes that moisture out of your skin, but usually dry skin is a genetic element, genetic or um, if you're taking certain medications. So it's more of a systemic thing when you have dry skin. Symptoms are going to be tightness, small pores, scaly skin, um, fine, fine wrinkles on the skin as well when you have dry skin, and you just notice this overall le leatheriness. You want to, with dry skin, you want to exfoliate because you want to remove the, the top layer of your skin and you want to be able to open that up so you'll be able to deposit a nice combination of an oil and water formulation onto your skin and hold that in with a little bit more emphasis on the oil part. This is because the oil part will bring, trap in the moisture, hydration, and will bring in buoyancy will bring in 
uh, thickness through that hydration, but hold it in and reduce what we call trans epidermal water loss. Because you need to have this really good balance in your skin between the oil and the water. And when you have dry skin, not only are you lacking the, uh, the, the hydration, you're also lacking the ability to hold it in. And this is where a good cream or good fatty acid, this is where a good occlusive barrier helps to hold that in. Now let's move on to dehydrated skin. Dehydrated skin is skin that lacks not oil, it lacks water, dehydration. When you are dehydrated, you drink water. We don't drink oil when we're dehydrated. So you have to think about hydration, hydro, that is water. You can have oily skin, like I do, in large pores, a lot of sebum, and still have what is called superficial dehydration. And you can really see this by really examining your skin in a magnifying mirror, and you will notice that you've got this little fine kind of scaliness to your skin. Um, just fine little veiliness to the skin surface. This is a clear indicator that you have an abundance of the oil, but you're lacking that water. Causes of dehydrated skin, is it's going to be a lot of overexfoliation, not, not having a lot of moisture in the air or the environment. Because usually when you have oily skin or combination skin, even normal skin, that water level should be there. That hydration should be there. But if you have a lifestyle that's very dehydrating, maybe a lot of coffee, a lot of alcohol, a lot of salt, you're in an environment that is very dry aired, you can have this dehydration. So you want to be able to replenish the moisture within your skin. One of the cool ways of, uh, and also what is, what does dehydrated skin look like? Dehydrated skin is not necessarily scaly. It's more dull and lackluster. You can still, you can have enlarged pores. You'll have a dullness to your skin. You'll have a sallowness to your skin. It lacks plumpness as well. It's kind of flat because again, within the cell, so you're gonna have a cell and the cell is gonna be a fat based or a fat component within the cell, like a grape. You think about a grape, think about a grape, think about a raisin, right? The grape is going to be your skin cell with a juiciness inside, and that is gonna be the hydration. So the, the skin itself is gonna be more like the oil component, and the water inside is gonna be the juiciness. When you have a raisin, you still have that skin, but you, you the moisture, the water has been sucked out of there, right? And what happens is you get this shriveled up. So this is what happens, this is the difference between a dehydrated skin. And this is why it's important to have the hydration, because the hydration, adds plumpness. The hydration, the water part, is going to add, plump out the skin, plump out lines and wrinkles, help with the buoyancy, really helps to thicken up the skin. So this is why when you listen to skincare claims, right, you will hear people say smooth out lines and wrinkles. So when you say smooth out lines and wrinkles, this is going to be a moisturizer or something that you put on your skin and it's going to help level it off a little bit, smooth it out. But when you hear a plump up or thickens the skin through hydration, this is a clear indicator that the product has a hyaluronate or a humectant, a moisture binder in there that increases a density. So it's not just about smoothing off and leveling off the surface, it's actually increasing a density. And this is why you want to know the difference between dry skin and dehydrated skin. A lot of people have, they say I have dry skin and they're putting cream on that is, a or they're putting oils on their skin and they're not actually addressing the dehydration within the skin. So these are the common misconceptions is that you will think that you have dry skin, but your skin is dehydrated or it's the other way around. You're just putting hyaluronate on your skin. And with this hyaluronate, maybe you have a dry skin. Okay. But you're using something for dehydrated skin. And so you're not locking in that hyaluronate. So one of the best things to think about with your skincare is always trying to create a balance between the hydration and the dehydration, right? So you want to be able to clearly know, do I have dry skin, which is something that is the opposite of oily skin? 
And then when you determine, say, for example, that you have dry skin, what I would do then with dry skin is I would have a skincare routine that ensures all the time I have a moisturizer on, something that is going to help reduce transepidermal water loss, something that is richer, thicker, and more of an oil-based or a fat-based component, more of a butter in that essence. So you want to be able to have something that's lubricating and is going to slow down any kind of evaporation. If I have dehydrated skin, I have to do a couple of things, is I have to put the hydration back into the skin and then I need a light moisturizer to help hold that in. Because it's that hydration that we wanna really bring in, that water component that we really wanna bring into the skin. What's really also good is to think of, regardless of dry or dehydrated skin, always start with a cleansing routine that is going to clean your skin without stripping your acid mantle. So keep that the skin more acidic, right? Then you're going to exfoliate, a gentle exfoliation. Take that surface off. You want that surface to come off to open up your skin in a way that it can receive the water components. This is why we talk about serums, essences onto your skin. Something with a hyaluronate, something that has a, or a little bit a, of a wet skin, damp skin. You wanna be able to trap in that moisture, hold that moisture in, and then on top of that, you're going to put your cream. This system allows you to be able to balance between that hydration and then locking in the hydration. The goal of your skincare, once you've cleansed your skin and you balance your, your acid mantle and preserve that microbiome, the goal of your skincare is to have enough water and enough fat. Those two elements are very important. The water is important within your cells because the, when your cells are full of water or have the right kind of hydration, this actually encourages transportation of nutrients and also communication. So not only do the cells bring in and out, you know, they, they bring in nutrients and get rid of toxins, right? Because the cells, this is a living layer, right? And it's a living element of your skin. But also there is communication. The cells talk to each other. The skin talks to other parts of the body is talking to each other. And it requires the hydration, the water component to do that. The sound, just think about it. I, I like to think about it this way, is that the sound is not traveling through the oil part or the fat part. The sound travels through the water part. That's why we call sonar. And when you think about when the ocean and you think about dolphins talking to each other, that's through water, right? Or when they do ultrasound, they put that water gel on you and then they send that signal through because it's increasing that communication. So cellular communication is very important in skincare and in skin health. What we can do when we have dehydrated skin is increase the hydration. This will increase cellular communication, usually cellular integrity, a lot of good benefits. If you leave it with dehydrated skin and you just put a moisturizer on top, this is where you get that leather-like look. You get the skin that is kind of um, older looking. You see this premature aging happening and you don't see this robust element. This is why the exfoliation, removing those surface cells, removing the dead dry cells on the surface, and then being able to hydrate and then moisturize. And I find it confusing for many people because we interchange the language and the language of skincare is quite confusing because we talk about dry skin and dehydrated skin, right? One is a lack of oil, one is a lack of water. We also talk about toners and serums and essences. And people are using toner to talk about anything that is in a serum state that is not a cream. And that's incorrect too, because that also doesn't help somebody who's trying to solve a skincare issue. Like, do you know, when you're using a toner to, to me as a cosmetic chemist, a toner is something that tones, puts, attunes the skin's pH, right? So this is going to be something that restores the acid mantle of the skin and is used as an atoner or an astringent, something that's element in, it's part of the cleansing phase. And then when you move on to your serum phase, you're going to use your antioxidants, your peptides. All of these are going to be things that don't tone the skin. These are things that are going to help with the communication, the hydration 
of the skin, the repair of the skin. Then you move into, that's a water phase. And then you move into a fat phase, which is going to be the cream that actually increases, even though moisture, we talk about that moisture content, increases the moisture content by creating an occlusive barrier through fat that traps in the moisture. It seems very circular. It seems very confusing. But if we take a moment to just put a visual in place, and this is why I always say, think about yourself when you're thirsty. What are you going to reach for? Are you reaching for water? Are you reaching for oil? You are reaching for water to drink. But when you want to lubricate something, when you want something to uh, be waterproof, you want to put something that is a fat or an oil on it, and that's going to create a protective coating. Both elements are equally as important. And I would say the first importance, level of importance, is going to be increasing the hydration, getting that water component in there. Why? That cellular communication. Very important. See, a lot of the growth factors that we're utilizing now, and even the peptides that we're using now, they're all signals. So when we're creating skincare technologies, when we're creating formulations, we're using a lot of ingredients that don't necessarily penetrate into the skin but they communicate to the skin and you can only do the communication with the ample hydration. Very important in how you get success with your skincare. So you want the hydration. So even those with, you know, oily skin, they're going to say, my skin is so oily. I don't need to hydrate. I don't need to moisturize. You're right. You probably don't need to moisturize, but you do need to hydrate. And when you have dry skin, you definitely need to moisturize, you need to bring in that component to reduce that transepidermal water loss, to increase the cellular communication, to increase the activity um, of the repair, of the availability of the nutrients, and you know, really increasing the overall integrity of your skin. Ingredients to look for, um, to really keep in mind. So let's let's talk about dehydration. When your when your skin is dehydrated, you want to use a humectant. So humectants are going to be your hyaluronate. You're going to want low molecular weight hyaluronate more than high molecular weight. Why? Because the low molecular weight, which is a smaller molecule, will go into your skin layer, you know, the, the surface part of your skin. And that is going to be able to be like an empty vesicle, an empty balloon that can go into your skin at a, a down a, a couple of um, degrees, if you will. And what that's going to do, it's going to fill its sac up with water, hydration. It's going to draw moisture, hydration, water into that area, create plumpness, create volume. That this is going to smooth out lines and wrinkles. The high molecular weight sits on top and kind of acts like a lid to slow down some of that transepidermal water loss. This is why oily skin likes hyaluronate. Another alternative or something that works really well with hyaluronate, polyglutamic acid as an ingredient. You can also do glycerin. Glycerin, I like the combination of hyaluronate and glycerin together. I think they work really well together. They're both humectants. Now, a lot of people say, well, I don't like glycerin because glycerin takes moisture out of your skin and holds it there. I don't know. Um, I don't think it's dehydrating your skin. I think it's also helping to water your skin and to bring the moisture up to a level of that skin surface where you visibly can see that smoothing out and the plumping up and thickening up that epidermis uh, um, layer, which is really what we're talking about when we're talking about um, dehydration. You want to plump that epidermal layer of the skin. So your ingredients are going to be hyaluronate. Your ingredients are going to be glycerin. You have natto or poly polyglutamic acid, which is an ingredient or an active that we can utilize within formulations that acts the same way as a hyaluronate. And some people like it even better uh, than a hyaluronate. I like all of them. I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to pretend that they don't all have a functional role within your skincare, especially addressing the retention of moisture, water in the skin. For dry, well, this is also for, for dehydrated skin, ceramides. Dry and dehydrated skin both will benefit from ceramides. Ceramides are sphingolipids. What does that mean? That means that these are fats, lipids, that are naturally occurring within the skin. 
And they take their, their cue from the sphinx, if you will. So they're like the protective layer or the outside layer of that pyramid where the sphinx is. But the sphingolipid, it sits in between your skin cells. So if these are your skin cells, you just think of bricks and mortar. So you have the brick and then you have the cement that is holding the brick together. So your skin cells are the bricks and the ceramides are the mortar. The ceramides are very important, naturally occurring in the skin. When you add ceramides back into your skincare, so this is why we want a healthy microbiome because the microbiome will create ceramides, but usually our microbiome is not nourished as much or is not robust because the good and bad bacteria, when you have that, maybe you have rosacea or you have acne or you have sensitivities, your microbiome is not in its best state. So it's not making as as much ceramides or enough ceramides to reduce the transepidermal water loss and to keep that hydration in on your skin and to keep your skin balanced between the oil and water. So you want to be able to use that ingredient. Now there's many different types of ceramides. Usually in formulations, you should look for a combination blend of ceramides. So they usually have about three ceramide blend. This again is because Many ceramides, there are many ingredients that are ceramides that we can use a lot, utilize in formulations. Some work better than others. The most successful in tests have been when they blend a few of the ceramides together. And I think this is just because there's a synergistic blend. It, it's just much more skin friendly. The skin can still breathe, but it holds on to its hydration. It doesn't allow the dehydration to happen. Another ingredient to look for, I love, um, is Actoem. This is an extremophile and actually all the extremophiles, the extremophiles that are osmotic regulators. What's an osmotic regulator? An osmotic regulator is an ingredient that balances or regulates water, right? So an osmotic regulator, if you were to have an aquarium, fish tank, right? And so you filled it up on Monday and the water level was up to the top. Usually what happens in it with an aquarium is every week you, you go and you, you top up and you add a little bit more water because the water evaporates into the atmosphere. You can see that the water level goes down, you know, so you want to make sure that your fish, your aquarium have enough water in it. If you were to put ecto in, or these extremophiles in that aquarium, that water level would remain the same. It would remain pretty constant because it doesn't allow for that dehydration. It basically has a level where it says it can't go below a certain level. So osmotic regulators are really good for dry skin and dehydrated skin. For dry skin as well, you wanna be able to use maybe a vitamin E, you wanna use an essential fatty acid. These are other elements, even the butters are very good as more of a lubricant. And you can feel it when you're, when you're dealing with your skincare, you can see that there's skincare that is more water-based and more oil-based. And this is really going to determine how much moisture you're holding in and how much your, your skin is able to fight the environmental challenges that it has because the environment is constantly doing things to your skin. Right now, in this environment, my skin is dehydrating. I have lights on me. Um, the temperature is a little different. You have forced air, either heating or air conditioning. And what this is doing is it's drying out the air. The skin is responding. So what do you do? You actually put a moisture barrier on. I have, you know, this on to reduce or slow down the level of dehydration and moisture loss, right? The fats also get used up as part of the lubrication. So it's important to know that your skincare routine is something that you're always on top of. Your skin is constantly changing or it's constantly susceptible to what's going on in the environment, what you are actually doing. Knowing the difference between dry skin and dehydrated skin, I know a lot of people think, well, I have oily skin, so I'm fine. I never need a moisturizer in my skin because it has plenty of oil. It does not need plumping or it cannot be dehydrated, but it can. And this is where you have, a lot of times you have what they call dry acne, um, or you start to notice you get this kind of veiling on your skin. 
you'll notice that your skin hardens a little bit as well too, because you need that water components. So this balance between the water and oil, very, very important in your skincare routine. An ideal skincare routine for both dry and dehydrated skin is going to be roughly the same, but you are going to tailor make it a little bit more for exactly what your skin needs. So you want to start with your cleansing. You both need to cleanse your skin. So you want to cleanse your skin to take off the dirt, the impurities, any kind of debris on your skin, makeup. When you have dry skin, you may want to be a little bit more careful, okay? Um, you don't want to over dry your skin out, right? You want to be able to clean your skin and not be very harsh with your skin because when you have dry skin, you don't have that fat component. Your skin tends to be very fine pores, usually a little bit, I find it a little bit more temperamental when you have dry skin. So you're going to use maybe more of a cream cleanser. When you have dehydrated skin, I feel that you still use more of an exfoliating cleanser, a little bit harsher cleanser, a little bit stronger cleanser to really get rid of that superficial dehydration and to open up to be able to fill in that skin with the hydration to really bring um, that balance to the skin. You're going both, uh, you can use, so you got your cleansing phase and then you're going to have a really nice gentle exfoliation phase. And then your moisturizers. When you have dry skin, look for a heavier moisturizer. You can have more of a silicone base, a fatty acid base, very good. When you have dehydrated skin, you want more of a ceramide base. You want more of a probiotic, more of an osmotic regulator base. So this is going to really determine because a lot of times you will find that because you're not sure if you're dry or dehydrated, you're using a heavy moisturizer and you notice that your pores clog up. You get a lot of congestion in the skin because what you needed was more hydration, but you gave it more lubrication and knowing the difference. If you're confused by what type of skin you have, see your dermatologist, see a skincare specialist. They're able to really diagnose it or give you that age and stage. You could also just see by when you're cleansing your skin, after you clean your skin, you know, check for oil after 20 minutes with, with a Kleenex tissue. You can just literally see that. If you see a bit of oil on your skin, you're going to tend to be more dehydrated, that would be an issue for your skin. Um, but if you're not, and you're just dry, then you're going to know that too. Because that 20 minute test really says a lot with your skincare routine. I hope you enjoyed this um, segment on dry skin versus dehydrated skin. I think, you know, really the benefits to having dry skin is your skin is fine, refined, your pores are small. You just want to be able to moisturize your skin, really bring that fatty acid element and lubricate the skin. So you really have that opportunity of adding more of those fats to your skin, right? So that oils to your skin. When you have dehydrated skin, like me, dehydrated skin, or you tend to have more oily skin in large pores. So I think the chore is a little bit more in the sense of how you're going to cleanse that skin, how you're going to stay, stay on top of the pore size and the balance between the oil and the water, and then ensuring that you have enough moisturizer without, I don't know, causing breakup, breakout on your skin. But there are benefits to both skin types. I guess you would say that with dry skin, the benefit is your skin usually tends to be a bit clearer and more refined. And with the dehydrated skin that tends to be a little bit more on the oily side, um, you don't see the visible signs of aging as quickly. But both skin types, you need a good skincare routine, you need a regular skincare routine, and it's just wise to be able to use the right skincare for your skin type. Remember our skin responds to what we're doing and our skin does change. So your skin today may not be the same skin that you're going to have a year from now. So be aware of how your skin is changing. Your diet has a lot to do with it. The environment that you're in has a lot to do with it. Your age and stage. I'm a big believer of age and stage. And I'm also a big believer of, you know, really good skincare technologies and understanding the benefits of all of it together. Anyway, Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this 
episode of uh, Dry Versus Dehydrated Skin, Confessions of a Cosmetic Chemist. I look forward to your comments, your questions, your feedback. It's really important to me that we get this kind of dialogue within our community. Let me know what topic you want us to talk about in the future. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.